Hi. Oh, hello. Hello. Hi. It is 2018 and I have lost the ability to be able to talk to a camera. I used to be really good at it. Like if you remember back in the heyday, I used to be able to talk to the camera all the time, but I've lost it. I've put down the camera. I've stopped vlogging. I've stopped filming things. And it's not like I don't love you guys. I don't love YouTube anymore. It's just that I put the camera down for some reason and I'm struggling to pick it back up. So because I'm so awkward talking to a camera, but I have loads of things to say, like so much to want to talk to you about, I decided to do getting ready with me <laughs> while talking about the 10 best films I watched in 2017. So basically last year I made a video called 000 January and in that series I put my resolutions and one of them was to watch 50 new films in 2017. 50 films I hadn't seen before going in blind. And I destroyed it. I think I watched like 60 and like 30 with them in the cinema. I was very proud of myself. I did a really good job. And I want to talk about the films that were the best. I hate being negative. When I first started YouTube, I made book reviews and I was a very negative person. I used to like just talk non-stop about the books I hated, but never about the ones I liked. And I want to change that. I only want to talk about the films that I thought were the best. Number 10, film stars Don't Die in Liverpool, directed by Paul McGuinn, and it was released last year. This film is based on the book of the same name from Peter Turner's perspective of his romance with Gloria Graham, a Hollywood movie star, in the 1970s. It tackled something I didn't know needed to be tackled in my own mind. So when old people talk about sex, let's go there. <laughs> when old people talk about sex, I'm always the first person to be like, <laughs> like, <laughs> they're humans too just because they're old doesn't mean they shy away from sex seeing this old woman have a sex life and a romantic life for her partner it really just went hey jasmine you're an idiot hollywood loved to paint old women as the muddly advice figure who tells you all about romance in their heydays i know they're humans too they have sex lives they have romance lives we needed to be showing that in hollywood this film basically demands more age gap between actual adult decisions and it demands more films about women having sex in their old age and i like that a lot they don't feel need to explain each of the characters backstories and also both of them have problems on each side it's not like a Peter Turner can do no wrong or Gloria Graham can do no wrong like both of them have problems through the whole film and they kind of like battle that I would recommend this film to people who came away from La La Land going I just didn't like that it was a musical number nine call me by your name directed by Lucia Gordon <laughs> and released last year this is a film also based on a book of the same name and it is about a homosexual couple in the 1980s between two men and also it has an age gap have you seen a thing i'm gonna read out my thoughts because i wrote down what after i came out of the cinema what i thought about it and this is what i put it was a strange experimental beautiful real and erotic movie peaches and the word later will never be the same in my opinion and i'm just waiting for these actors to get the recognition they deserve they were so good in this film so good the way i saw this film was kind of like a love letter to italy in the 1980s i don't know if that was the case and i really appreciated that because you just got to see the beautiful countryside you didn't stereotypically go to Rome or venice you saw the countryside for what it was and it was stunning it's really made me want to go to italy i recommend this film to people who love lgbtqa plus relationships and wish there was more of them in the cinema the next film i'm going to talk about is Beauty and the Beast, directed by Bill Condon and released last year. I loved it, I'm sorry. I know that everybody wants to be that person who goes, I didn't love it. They need to stop making live action remakes. They need to put their money and time into making better things. That's so true, I understand that. But I'm a sucker for this story. And of course I loved it, of course I went to go see it. And of course I took it with me and I put it into the best pile. I loved it. I know they were furthering heterosexual romances. I know they were furthering putting the white woman first, the white couple. <sighs> but I loved it, I'm sorry. Emma Watson and Dan Stevens had good chemistry, in my opinion. They did, and I know a lot of people disagree. A lot of people say Emma Watson was a bit of cardboard during the film. I disagree, I think she was good. I think she was a good Belle. 
obviously I know crap all about auto-tune. Harriet, Booksy Nerds, did tell me that she was auto-tuned and that she could tell, but I couldn't. And to be honest, I don't really care that much. Should they have gotten someone who can sing? Of course they should have, but it's Disney. Of course they wanted to make it a female who is a feminist, first of all, and Watson has done a lot of good from where she's standing. Um, of course they wanted someone who could bring in the money, who could be on the poster and everyone would recognise. Of course they wanted to bring in someone, but nobody made. Luke Evans was amazing. I loved Luke Evans. He was the perfect choice for Gaston. And the fact that you matched him with LeFou, he was so good at LeFou. And it was, I do understand what people are saying about him not being gay enough, but I also don't understand why Russia ban the film over how much gayness Josh Fad's character represent showed. There's a lot of conversation to be had over this film. I'm just summing up very quickly because I have a lot of films to go through. I'm sorry. I cried during this film. This Disney still managed to get me. I think that's the reason why I loved it so much. The fact that this film still managed to make me cry. Same with Cinderella. Even though I knew the story, I knew what was coming, it still managed to make me cry. So my god, if you've seen the film, you will know what I'm talking about when I say the ending. And just the beast. Dan Stevens. Whoever wrote that script, whoever decided on this decision of what Dan Stevens' final lines should be, should have been slapped over the head with a book. There's a certain thing that happens. You'll, when you watch it, if you haven't seen it, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about when I say final scene, final conversation pretty much between these two characters. What is happening? I was so proud of the whole film. I just felt uncomfortable. The Breakfast Club, directed by John Hughes and released in 1985. So, this film is about five kids in detention on a Saturday morning. That's all you need to know about this film. Don't go looking for answers, don't go looking on the internet, just go into this film blind, that's all I recommend. It's really clever and I enjoyed how much detail was put into each character and I also understand that if you're going to set a whole film in a room, like a detention room, you've got to have strong performances and this film delivers. There is so many strong performances. I think that's all I need to say. It's one of those films that I don't want to say too much because you need to go see it for yourself. It's on Netflix. If you do have Netflix or your family has Netflix, I definitely recommend sitting down and watching this film. Number six, Wonder Woman, directed by Patty Jenkins and released last year. This film is a prequel to Batman vs Superman and it is kind of showing where Wonder Woman came from and how she became the way she became. This film did very, very well. I'm very, very happy with it. I was blown away because there were certain scenes, no spoilers, there were certain scenes that just reduced me to tears because it was so good, it was so well thought out. It was just a moment of powerful women being on screen. I just, Gal Gadot. I fell in love with it all, to be honest. The cinematography, the soundtrack, the dorky characters, the plot. I know there are some holes in the plot. Trust me, I will be the first person to put my hand and be like, this is not a perfect film. But despite these holes, I still really love it. I recommend going and seeing it if you haven't seen it. Next film. Number five, Singing in the Rain, directed by Gene Kelly. They've got the same last name as me. Uh, and Stanley Donan and released in 1952. This film is about the film industry going from no sound to sound and the main actress, like everybody's favourite person in the film, um, having the most horrible singing voice. So the main actor needs to find someone to dub over her and how this woman changes everything. I fell in love with her, like I really did. A lot of people said, if you like La La Land, you need to see Singing in the Rain. And I did. I fell in love with the cinematography, the songs, the dorky characters. Again, I love them dorky characters. And the story. It also has the late Debbie Reynolds in it. And I never saw any of the films she was in before her death. And when I was watching it, I just was like, you're an amazing person. I can completely understand why you birthed the wonder that is Carrie Fisher. The only critique I have about this film is the fact that um, it has a story within a story no spoilers. It kind of took me out of the experience. It was just something that I didn't think needed to be in there. But hey, this film's a classic. This film has withstanded 50 years of high praises. I don't know nothing. Number four, Murder on the Orient Express, directed by Kenneth Branagh and released last year. 
I am a biased person. I absolutely love Kenneth Branagh's work. Cinderella, Thor, I love his style of directing. I'd really love to meet him and shake his hand. I'm biased here. That's all I have to say before I continue with this review. So this film is based on the book of the same name and it is about a man who was killed on a train and the detective, Poilo, 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 <laughs> uh, has to solve it. Great performances from all the cast, but figured because it's an all-star cast. He had the perfect amount of suspense, tension and figuring out the mystery vibes. And the only thing I wish he had was an epilogue. Really wish I could find out what happened to these characters after. I know it's meant to be a mystery sort of thing, but I just wanted to know. Number three, La La Land, directed by Damien Chazelle and released in 2016. This film is about a woman and a man who have big dreams and fall in love. Uh, attempting to make their dreams come true with their significant other. I can hear you, you're screaming. Why did La La Land beat singing in the rain? You, you fiend. I'm sorry. I feel like the reason I love this film is so much is because I was inspired to make the films that I want to make through this film. And I think coming out of the cinema, you shouldn't be like, yes, but was the story accurate? Yeah, but was there plot holes? Yeah, but was there chemistry? Yeah, but did the soundtrack have this and this and this? I feel like people get too worked up about that. I feel like if you exit the cinema and you're happy and you're still in the state of being in a movie, and if you're still like inspired and feel good, I think the film did its job. It entertained you, it made you feel happy. And this film did. And I feel that's the reason why it beat Singing in the Rain and The Breakfast Club and a lot of other films because I came out of that film ecstatic. I came out of that film wanting to jump into it again, which I did. I went to go, this is the only film that I went to twice in the cinema. I started to sing and dance in the street when I exited this film. My roommate was not best pleased. This film has beautiful cinematography, chemistry, writing, music, emotion, locations, and realism. I think Emma Stone and Ryan Gosling were so good. I'm sorry, I've really enjoyed it. I understand why people didn't. I hear you. Please write down in the comments if you didn't like it or if you did, and please tell me why, because this film, in my opinion, was so good. Number two. Collateral Beauty, directed by David Frankel and released in 2016. This film is about a man who has recently lost his young daughter and decides to write letters to love, time and death. And he doesn't expect to get replies. This film, it's a stunning film in my opinion. It's heart-wrenching in my opinion. Any film that deals with a young person dying and then goes to the parents instead of going to the quirky best friend, um, it's heart-wrenching. I came out of the film going, I want to do something like that. That looked amazing. I came out of that film going, I wish I could have come up with those ideas. I feel the casting and the writing were lush. I'm looking at the last bullet point and it just says, super pretty, which it was. It was very, very pretty. Number one, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, directed by James Gunn and released last year. Come on down, you are number one. You got to me, oh, you so cute. When the first Guardians of the Galaxy trailer came out, I went, this looks like a pile of crap. Marvel, I know you can do better. What the hell, a talking raccoon? A talking tray? What is this? I want to know more about Iron Man. And it's true, Tony Stark, always number one in my heart. But Peter Quill, as soon as I started watching this film, literally like rocketed straight up to like number two, nearly number one. I love these characters. And the only thing that I came away from number one thinking was, I wish I could learn more about the other characters. And God did that come true in this film. This is why I love it so much. There's backstory and character development of all these characters that I really wanted to know more about in the first one. This film, <laughs> I didn't explain what it was about, is a sequel to Guardians of the Galaxy number one and it takes place when Peter Quill and the rest of the Guardians are rescued by a mysterious man. The music is amazing, I loved the first soundtrack, I loved the second one equally. I feel the comedy had been upped and it was good because Guardians of the Galaxy is not something you should take seriously. And I feel like people who saying Guardians of the Galaxy 2 had too much comedy, it's a it's got a talking raccoon in it. What are you expecting? Of course it's gonna make fun of itself all the time. My point was they didn't make it as serious as the other Marvel films, which I think we kind of need. 
because obviously when it gets down to the nitty gritty when the bad guy's in front of you trying to kill you you don't expect everybody to crack a joke but when it happens again in every single marvel film that they go from all of a sudden all this comedy to serious mode it's nice to see someone go no during the serious moment i'm gonna crack a joke like chris pratt's character did in both of these films i feel like it needed that p s if I could change the order of the way I've listed these films, I would. I definitely would. Looking back on this list, I definitely think some films deserve to be higher or lower. Hacksaw Ridge was on this list for ages. I was like, nothing can be Hacksaw Ridge until like, I think it was like September and I watched a certain film and I had to take the Hacksaw Ridge off my list, even though I love that film. That film's so good. So yeah, it was kind of like picking and choosing and also the last three films were 9 out of 10. So of course they would forever be on the list unless I started rating films 10 out of 10, which I never do. If you want to know more about my film opinion, please go into my letterbox. Thank you for listening. I know this is not the video that people were expecting for the first video of 2018, but I think I needed this just to be getting ready, talking about something that I love and I'm passionate about but also just calmness. I'm hoping to put out more videos. I finished all my assessments. That is why it's taken quite a while, but I'm hoping to release three other videos in January. I hope, that's not a promise, but I hope. And also they're not all gonna be Life is Strange.